Hello, hello, and welcome to a Mind Elevation with Shavariel. That is me. Hello, Elevation Nation. What is going on? May you be having, well, that is not, that is not okay. May you be having, may you have a good day and be doing great, be doing great. Why is my sentences not like appropriate today? <sighs> may you be well. Okay. That's what I can tell you. May, be, may you be well and staying safe and your families also are doing good. So, you know what it is. Share to care this video, please. It helps the algorithm and it helps our messages, my messages, our messages, get into a space in communities and reach more people and also reach masses. So I need your help. Sharing to care is going to be a great impact for this channel. So, and also subscribe so that you know whenever I post a new video, you can watch it. And then also be notified when an upcoming video is scheduled. So I want to engage on this topic of specifically black men in therapy. Now I know what it's like as a black woman to, to be number one, to be a black woman and to be in this world of bias of racist, uh, discriminatory persons, situations, and being a woman. So it's a lot that comes with being an African American in America for, for both men and women who are African American. Now, the reason why I got onto this topic is because it just felt being tugged on by my heart because I know why I know why women would venture more to therapy than black men, but for black men, I see why it's not that common, and I'm going to tell you why so as a black man. It's already challenging. And I know for black women, we're just like, well, why don't we just have, why don't the black man just go, just go into therapy? Yes, he can, but there's multi layers to this thing. So for a black man, I know he just, he just wants to feel safe. That's, that's number one. Feel safe with his thoughts, feel safe with his feelings, feel safe with his heart. And as a black man, that's not easy, you know, and because it's truly, it's as if not for all black men, because some black men, some don't get to have the experience of maybe being in rural areas or be brought up with grandma and them or auntie and them or if you were brought up with your parents you weren't taught as much so again this is not a race thing it's just saying what barriers there are to be broken in order for some african-american men to go to therapy and the first one is feeling safe it is like a war zone for a black man in America. Number one, the color of your skin, or if you're even if you're a light skinned African American, you may have a name that's like a Dion or Troy or you know whatever whatever the case is. You so you may not look it, but you have a name that says okay, he may have some black in them. And that's not to be discriminative toward a name because, you know, I know some black men named Timothy, David, you know, so Robert. So, but it just depends 
on how he was brought up. And already, I can already see that black men aren't brought up in, in the nest of safety. There have been multiple times when I'm with my child, who is a black boy, and society views him a lot older than what he is. And my child is young, under the age of seven. And so even with being on a playground, society, people, other people view him as like truly an older kid. And it's, it doesn't make sense because clearly you can see this is a child. Okay, every child has different heights, but you can tell that's a child just by how they play, how they engage, you know, so, and then just knowing how a black boy is brought up, don't cry, you know, straighten up, wipe those tears off your face, stuff like that, you know, and there have been multiple times where I've seen that. And so it's like, the safety of a black man is is very tender and as they grow it depends on if they're going to have that experience of either more safety or less safety here's what i mean as a black man your thoughts your feelings are not always welcomed and when I say welcome, I mean, they're not always embraced as him being a human being. For some reason, society looks at his, his that's just a man or a half a man or, or a half or a one third of a man. People don't say that, but that's how they act. To say that this is a human being. And so when that happens, automatically, guards go up and this man feels like he is not safe to share his feelings why because even as a child black boys are just you know if they're anything like how some of us have grown up in the 90s and late 80s and 80s is children are to be seen not heard of course that's very unhealthy and why would you teach your child that but that's how it, that's how it has been in a lot of black households so expressing yourself was not freely given even though as a child you have your own personality so a man a man will hold on to that his feelings his thoughts his expressions and so where it comes into play with his safety is how are you supposed to express that in a safe place without someone going and telling your business so safety would be number one and two it's the healthy way to express it so instead of it being like you tell a black man like how to express his feelings because he's not going to reciprocate that no person reciprocates that of being told how to express their feelings. They just want to express it. But if you can guide, if you can guide him, I'm talking about like in a therapy, if you are seeking therapy, he would have to be guided into expressing the true roots of how he's feeling. And I'm not a therapist. I'm just saying, how would it be encouraged more for black men, for some black men to go to therapy? Because living in this country definitely is needed. And so just how do you guide him to expressing that which he wants to express in a healthy manner? I watched today a sermon earlier. I'm not going to say who who the pastor was, but then there was also another sermon that I heard from a different pastor. So I'll tell you about the sermon that I saw today. The person was talking about 
a story, giving an example about how a person wanted to take their life and then somebody else came along, saw that person that wanted to take their life and attempted to get that person to not take their life by expressing to them why life is so important. Well, at the end of the story that the pastor told, the person who was attempting to save the other person from taking their life, they both ended up taking their lives. And after that was said, that both of them held hands to jump off and take their life. So jump off a bridge and take their life. All you heard was like laughs in the audience. And I'll tell you why that, that was bothersome. Even I didn't think that was a joke. Somebody taking their life is not a joke. And see, that's the problem that is currently a rise in society. People think it's funny to be mentally unhealthy. People think people ignore like signs of a depressed person or a deranged person or a psychotic person. It at first I, I it was just not believable because it's just like no somebody has some sense. But no, when I heard laugh and I'm talking about multiple laughs in the audience of when this pastor was given a sermon as an example that somebody can rub off on you the wrong way and then you and then those two people can both take their lives taking their life as in ending their lives and it was just sickening to hear like why would you laugh that was nothing to laugh about and then on another sermon there was a pastor talking about not he was he was just he was anticipating threat not anticipating but he was just looking at situations where an adult could be dangerous when a child could be dangerous because there were there has been news about a child going to school with a gun and it was just like well the adults I thought it was just the adults uh, that I had to look out for but it's children too that's what the pastor was saying and even then I saw smirks and grins like it's funny and it's not funny so as a black man seeking therapy safety to express yourself and expressing yourself in a healthy way. Those are the two things that I can automatically think of. And the reason why I believe, or the reason why it seems like it's not so, it's not more encouraged is because dysfunction is praised or, or is praised or dysfunction is so overlooked. Either way, this is not a good situation to be in. So, what do we do? You have to count on yourself. As a black man, please hear me. You have to count on yourself. Do not think that your loved ones are going to want to help you. They may not even know how to help themselves. You have to help you. Nobody is going to save you but you. So... No more depending on mama and them, daddy and them, uncle and them, grandma and them, cousin and them. No, because just like the story the pastor was given in, in the sermon about the person was attempting to save the life of the person who wanted to take their life. And instead of that, somehow the other person got influenced, negatively influenced to then take their own life. You have to save you. And so as a black man, I understand it's hard. You guys go to war day in and day out. You guys go to war. And you're a black man. They don't talk about the times you're discriminated on a job application. They don't talk about how you go into a job and, you, and they may like you get the job and then they call you just to give the position to somebody else. Nobody, nobody 
talks about the times that you go into a grocery store and all eyes are on you because they're looking at for you to steal something or because you're so tall of a, of a black man that it feels threatening or or they don't see the times that women, white women clutch their purses when you walk by as a black man. They don't see, or, or it could be a, just a woman in general. But I know I've heard specifically when a black man, as, as a black man walks by, I'm talking an experience from the man. He's seen white women clutch a purse as if like you want it from her. They don't talk about those times. They don't talk about when you get on the job or in a career. They shortening your hours just to give to somebody else that they like or somebody else in the organization that they're family with or family friends with. And they just don't care about you nor your position and treat you like dirt while you're on that job. So as you're attempting to provide for your family, there's hardships there that's, that's hard to overcome. And I understand. And the whole child thing, you know, if you are a father, I know that's a whole different thing. If you are put on child support, if you're not, but you you may not be in good with the mother and all of that stuff. I'll just say this. It is up to you to save you. Nobody is going to save you but you. You have to want to save yourself and save yourself urgently. Don't play with it. Because if you need therapy, seek it, get it. Now I know goods and services have risen, inflation and all of that stuff, but make a budget to say, look, I'm not gonna go out and eat fast food for this because this $25 I spend on fast food, I can put towards a therapy session for one hour. Just consider that because at the rate of things, how things are right now, and it's, and it's hard for, it's hard for people in general, but for black men, black women, as we come in, in into black history month, next month in February, it is, it is more than time to get better. It is more than time to rise up. It is more than time to excel. It is more than time to elevate. It is more than time to advance in excellence and make better decisions moving forward. So I say that I, I didn't go deep into it, but I just wanted to scratch the surface a bit. Maybe I'll go deeper on another video, but just hear me out. If you know you need help, if you know there is a need for help with you, seek it. Don't wait on somebody to recommend it to you. There's nobody in your head but you. There's nobody that knows your feelings more than you. You go home to yourself. You travel with yourself on these airplanes, on in these Ubers. You go by yourself most of the time to hotels, or if you don't, you still sit with yourself and reflect in yourself. You know what you need. And as a black man, I know it's hard. It's hard for black women and our children, but I know it's hard. It can be hard. It doesn't have to be. Because just like the black woman wants to feel safety, any woman, well, any person wants to feel safety. I know you want to feel safety as a man. And that is not talked about. Man is supposed to be provider of security. Yes, but he's a human being. He wants to feel safe too. He wants to feel security too. Because if a man didn't, no man with no man of stature or wealth would have security. But he wants to feel that. Why? Because he knows he cannot do everything. So yes, you have a billion dollar business and yes, you have all these investments. Or even if you're just you have your own business or working at another business or brand but you still want the extra added security, whether it's hiring physical security or it may be financial security or whatever the case may be, you wanna, you wanna find and have a type of security. And mentally, you haven't been unlocked there yet with just feeling secure 
security and safety and becoming better mentally. But the thing that you have to do, brothers, you have to be willing to listen. We don't all come, and I mean those who you love, we don't come to hunt you. That's what I need you to understand. Because for some reason, and I get that a lot, you have to explain things to people a lot in this era. It is so annoying because it's just like, you know what I meant, okay? I'm, I, I have a lot of thoughts on my mind, but you know what I meant. But people still be like, well, no, it's like this, or, or you know, well, what did you mean by that? And, and I get it. Some people's perceptions and understandings are on a different level, but it's just ridiculous today. You have to explain every little, well, not everybody, but with some you just have to overly you just have to explain a little bit too much when you got what that person said the first time so but brothers you have to be able be willing to listen and it's not to hurt you it's to help but if you don't allow the help and if you aren't being honest there is no help you have to be willing to listen. I'll give it to you like, like the word of the Lord told me. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. I'm going to give it to you one more time. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. <laughs> Brothers, if you are genuinely seeking help, you have to be able to receive it. But if you're not in that season of receiving it, but you're still asking for help, it's not going to be wise and beneficial to provide something you guard at, at, you guard at not receiving. So that's just like asking for a plate of food, but you're really not hungry. That plate of food is going to go to waste. That advice is going to go to waste. That guidance is going to go to waste if you are not willing to receive it. So I give this to you. And from the sincerity of my heart, may you all be well. And getting better in this world, getting better with yourself. Because when you're getting better with yourself, you will be a better citizen in this world and to those who you love and to others. So that's what I got for you today. May you be safe and I'll talk to you again. Peace y'all.